Hello everyone, I am Professor Muhammad Hawa from University of Jordan. I would like today to talk about NS3++, which is a graphical user interface we've been developing for the NS3 simulator. NS3 or Network Simulator version 3 is a very popular open source network simulator with an active community of developers. It is written in C++ and models a lot of networking protocols including TCP IP, Wi-Fi, cellular and wireless networking protocols. However, a challenge for using NS3, especially for newcomers, is that it has no graphical interface, which makes it a bit difficult to use for newcomers. In addition, it's mainly developed on the Linux operating system with only scattered efforts for supporting it on Windows. What I noticed is that research assistants, uh, fresh graduate students have difficulty working with NS3, especially if they are not excellent programmers in C++ or Python. And the purpose of this development effort I'm discussing right now is to try to reduce the steep learning curve for a newcomers to this simulator. Currently, to work with NS3, you have to write NS3 scenario files, typically by hand. You could use C++ or you could use Python. But in both cases, you have to describe your network topology, your scenario, by hand. Notice here, for example, you say you want two nodes in your simulation. You describe what channel you want and you describe what attributes you want to assign to this channel. However, working with this type of scripting structure is a bit challenging because you need to know those attributes for every model that you're working with. And to find this, if you're not extremely familiar with NS3, you have to dig into a lot of source code or search a lot of pages in the manual to find what you're looking for. In addition, the code can be long if you want to describe a lot of properties or a lot of attributes for your models. And that explains the steep learning curve that we find when fresh graduate students try to use this simulator. It has to be said, there are some ways to reduce the effort of writing the code. There are helper classes in NS3, which can reduce the amount of code that you write. Unfortunately, using helper classes does not give you the consistent behavior that you see in NS3, which makes them uh, still difficult to use. In addition, I noticed that a lot of students have difficulty debugging their code because they have to use command line and especially for those who are accustomed to Windows operating system, debugging using the command line is not a simple thing. And that's why we started working on a graphical user interface for NS3, which we call NS3++, because we want researchers to use network simulations. Network simulations are very important for computer networks. They're very important for wireless systems. And we want it to be easier for newcomers to join the effort of researching using such simulators, especially for this important simulator, NS3. This development started with myself as the only developer in late 2016, but in the past two years, the project started picking up pace because a group of research assistants started joining me in that development effort. We are currently in the alpha stage, but we hope to release the beta version by the end of this year, 2020. We uh, posted even a YouTube video as a quick demo of our alpha release, but it's still it's a very early version. I hope to show you this uh, demo at the end of this presentation. When, when we designed the NS3++ software, we had a few objectives in mind. We wanted it to be a very natural, very familiar user interface. And once the user builds the scenario within that graphical interface, the graphical interface auto-generates the C++ code for that user. You don't have to write your own C++ code. However, advanced users still can take that code and customize it to their liking to get the extra flexibility. However, for both newcomers and advanced users, we wanted to provide a full IDE experience where the user can advance his or her coding speed by using all those features like syntax highlighting, auto-completion, searching, refactoring, all that stuff provided by advanced IDEs, especially visual debugging. We wanted debugging to be easy for NS3, so we wanted to provide IDE-based debugging for end users. In addition, we're hoping to 
accomplish an important task where we allow development of NSA3 across different operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and so on. Not only that, in the future, we also hope to integrate animation, data visualization tools, and so on. So it's one-stop shop for everything NSA3. However, we have to say that designing a full-fledged IDE over different operating systems is not a simple thing. That's why what we decided to do is design a plugin for an already existing IDE. We decided to use a Qt Creator. Qt Creator is an open source IDE that allows plugins, and we decided to design NS3 as a plugin for that piece of software. Of course, we examined different choices like Qt Creator, Microsoft Visual Studio, VS Code, Xcode, Eclipse, and so on. But we figured out that there are a lot of features, a lot of advantages for a Qt Creator that we decided to work with that. First of all, it is open source. It is available across different platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac OS. It is a mature project. It is well maintained. It is also written in C++ which means that NSA3 community which are familiar with C++ can also contribute to our uh, plugin. It includes a consistent compiler for Linux and Windows which hopefully will help us allow cross-platform development for NSA3. Here we see a quick overview of the plugin running within Qt Creator. We see three areas. We have a prototypes area and then the work area and the attributes area. You drag and drop different NS3 components here to build your scenario. And then if you select one of those components, you can change the attributes for that component. Once you create your networking topology, you can ask NSA3++ to convert that into C++ code compatible with NSA3. You don't have to write the code yourself. When we designed NSA3++, we did not want a rigid design because we were aware that NSA3 will keep improving, new models will be added, modifications will be introduced, and we did not want to keep changing or restructuring NSA3++. That's why we put a sort of a glue or interface between NSA3++ and the NSA3 simulator, which is the JSON configuration file. The JSON configuration file describes the objects that NSA3 uses and the attributes for those objects and the default values and so on and so forth, so that when NSA3++ loads, it reads the configuration file, which describes how NSA3 behaves, and then from that, NSA3++ can show the user the different prototypes, the different attributes, the different graphical elements needed to develop the C++ code. Hence, if NS3 team releases a new version of their network simulator, then all is needed from the NS3 community is to modify the JSON file accordingly, and then we read that JSON file into NS3++, and this way we read those modifications into the graphical interface. However, designing the JSON file was quite challenging for us because C++ is a quite an expressive language, which means that NS3 designers could do the same thing using different ways. And we needed to come up with only a limited set of rules to allow NS3 to be streamlined. And this worked for a lot of cases, but unfortunately, there were those corner cases which made things a bit difficult sometimes. Here I show you a little bit of the JSON file. I'm not going to go through details, but it shows you that we have something called primitive attributes or primitives or GUI primitives. Uh, those are things that you would expect from a graphical interface like a checkbox, like a line edit, spin box, and so on. And then you build basic objects or basic attribute patterns from those. Like for example, here I use a Q double spin box to create a double, and I give the default values and the limits for that double. And this way I created a basic object that the attributes of the objects can use. You can see here the effect of a Q double spin box, where NS3++ will force this a Q double spin box to obey the limits mentioned in the JSON file, obey the default values, and so on. We could also combine multiple primitives into one basic object. For example, here you see I want to describe time. I could do that with two parts, the amount of the time and the units of the time. See here I give the different units, and you see here I can set the amount of time, and I can also set the different units. I don't have to write this inside the code of NS3++. It can read it from the JSON file and then act accordingly. Here you see objects in NS3 where we describe the attributes of the different objects and one attribute can be the double that we talked about earlier, one attribute can be time and so on and so forth. So we managed to build the basic or primitive attributes and then build objects on top of that. 
this NS3 plus plus project started with myself as a single developer but then more and more people joined in and contributed to the project I list here some of those names and I hope as we open source the project we have more and more contributors and if you are interested in knowing more and downloading the uh, software once it's ready please visit this website where we will update you about everything new about this project Finally, I would like to say that we're designing NS3++ for both newcomers and advanced users and we're trying to prove that the full spectrum of NS3 code can be described using graphical interface even though sometimes we get stuck into certain corner cases but we hope to overcome those as the time comes in to release the beta version at the end of this year. Thank you very much for listening. I will take just a couple of minutes to demo the software and then we go back to the question and answer part of the presentation. Here is a Qt creator running. I'm gonna go file, a new file or project. And you can see, I can select NS3++ scenario file. I'll give it a name. I'm greeted with three areas in the plugin. There is the prototype area to my left. In the middle, I have my work area, and to my right is the attributes area. From the prototype area, I can select the different objects for NS3. I can select different nodes by drag and drop to the work area. I can also select different types of channels. For example, I can pick this one, and then I can connect the different nodes with the channel. This way I can build any topology for NS3 that I want. If I select a certain node, I can see here the different attributes that I can set for that node. And I can change any of those attributes. For example, I could change the mobility model. I have the different choices available from NS3. I can select, for example, random walk 2D. I'm greeted with the different attributes for that mobility model. I can select Gauss Markov, for example, different attributes, or I can just set it to constant position. I can change any of those attributes to my liking. I can also set the energy source. Those are read from the JSON configuration file. You can see here I have different options. For example, if I select lithium ion battery, then I can set the different attributes for that model. If I select the channel, I can also set the different attributes this is a CSMA channel, so I'm allowed to set the data rate and the delay. I can set for the delay the value, 5, 10, I can set seconds or, for example, picoseconds or milliseconds and so on. Those are options from the JSON configuration file. Same thing for the data rate. I can set bit per second, kilobit per second, megabit per second, and so on. If I go from the design mode to the edit mode, then NS3++ converts my topology into C++ code, as you can see here. Of course, this is an early version, so we don't have all the source code. But you can clearly see, for example, that we created three nodes and one channel, just like what we have in our scenario. We also see here that we created a constant position mobility model which we selected. We also notice here that we created a lithium ion energy source that we created. This C++ code is not full just yet, but as you select and change attributes, you notice that the created C++ file will reflect those attributes. If you want to know more and follow updates, please visit the website for NS3++.